Once you become fearless, life becomes limitless. If I did it once, I can do it again. This is my story of starting over in LA. Hola, love bugs. So in honor of Pride Month, we are doing a special episode of Destiny's Diary Vlog with my handsome son, who is currently going through their transitioning process. And um, I thought it would be cool for us to give some insight on his transition, our relationship um, through the process, the different you know trials and tribulations that we've gone through. And then we're gonna be answering questions off of our live feed on Instagram right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this um, episode and I hope anybody who is going through any type of situations with their children, with them either being gay or transgender. I hope this helps open up the line of communication between the two of you and some type of understanding because believe you, believe you me, boo, it was not easy for me in the beginning. Oh, I hope y'all can't see my. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. So, we did get a couple questions, and the first part we're going to go into, though, is how did you come out to me that you were gay, first of all? I actually remember that. So, I don't. So good. <laughs> so it was a bright, sunny day, and uh, we were on Burke Street in Philly, mm -hmm. and we were in a room talking about some random stuff. I don't even know what we were talking about. I was still going to uh, St. Francis D. Sales. And um, we were, you were just asking me a bunch of questions. And then you are like, okay, I got a serious question. And I was like, what's up? And you were like, do you like girls? And it was just a moment of silence. And then I was like, yeah. And then you just like fell back on the bed <laughs> and like started cracking up. And you were like, oh my God, wait, wait, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah. And like, you just cracked up and then it just went silent. And now, what grade were you in again? Because at St. Francis, that one up to what? I was like 7th or 8th grade. Yeah. When I told you about that. So. And then we went out to dinner, and that wasn't a great conversation. Oh, go ahead. Because I don't remember. How I do you really not remember? Because I told you the way my memory <laughs> works. Certain things stay. Certain I, think you, I think you had to leave to run some errands, and then you came back, and you were like, we're going to go out to dinner. And I was like, okay. And then, like. They cannot see you oh, in sorry. the camera. Um, when we got there, you were like, okay, so we have to talk about this. And I was like, okay. And quick version, quick version. Oh, Everybody ain't got all day. So you be having like 40 minute videos <laughs> anyway. We got bad questions to get through. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. And long story short, you was like, no. Yeah, so in the beginning, I was very, very resistant of her sexuality. I was not with it whatsoever. And we basically gangbanged in the house for a few years. And I was, I became extremely controlling of how she dressed. Um, I just wasn't with it. I was not with it. And then a situation happened between me and my mom, I think after Prince had attacked you and you was in the hospital. And I just seen how my mother, like, for whatever reasons, she just does not like me and did not accept me. And it made me feel so alone in the world that it made me reflect on how I was making. So during this, John, I'm going to be saying her, him, her, him. I'm going to switch back and forth. But no, I'm talking about him. It made me very, like, understanding and being like, you know what? I pray that I'm not making you feel this way, making you feel alone in the world to fight this battle. Because first of all, it's like, you're black, you're a female, you're gay, and now we're adding on transitioning. So, and you're transitioning into the number one hunted American right now, which is a black man. So I was like, you're gonna have so many battles to fight outside the house that this needs to be your safe zone. So you know what? I support you. I love you through it. I support you. You know, I still made a lot of shady comments. A lot. There were still times that, you know, I kind of would be like, 
my whole thing was if you want to dress like a boy and all that good stuff that's cool but keep your hygiene up like being a boy don't mean you dirty and you raggedy so i still expected him to dress like a certain way and stuff and i would kind of push on him for his uh senior pictures that he wore hoop earrings diamond necklace like let me tell y'all how for my senior pictures i wanted to wear the shirt and tie right nope nope it was a little drape off my shoulders. I'm going to burn those pictures. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to go back and redo my senior pictures, and we're going to do a comparison. That's what I'm going to do. You looked amazing, though. He looked amazing. But, you know, but then for prom, you know, I met him in the middle, and I let him wear um, a pantsuit that I made from scratch. So that was my way of support. And I was like, just give me this last thing, because I know once you're out my house, you're going to shave your head, get dreads, Get your titties cut off. Okay. So give me this last moment Ugh. with my with my with my baby girl. Thanks. I appreciate <laughs> it. But he gave it to me. So that kind of was our experience with um, his sexuality and stuff. It was not good at first, but now it's like I'm a geek about mine. I wish somebody would say something about my baby. And I have instructed everybody that they must address him as him. And then sometimes people be like, oh, but you just called him her. Because, motherfucker, I pushed him out. So, I pushed him out my vagina. So, at the end of the day, you know, I'm allowed to make that mistake. Period, Pooh. Period. So, but for everybody else, <laughs> show a little bit of respect. Um. So, the next question is, how did you feel as a girl? Um, Out of place. I'm like, what? Out of place. Um, I know, like, high school was really hard because I honestly didn't discover, like, what transgender was. Ever. I'm sorry, y'all. It's hot as hell. Oh, my God. Hey, uh, the star of the show. I'm about to make her views go up or whatever. Did you cut it off? Okay, never mind. Okay, go ahead. I think it's coming off. Um... But yeah, I felt out of place. I always felt like I was just in the wrong body. Like, I just felt like everything that I did was just not feminine enough. Like, I couldn't be a girly girl. I couldn't act like a girl. Like, there was just natural things that I did that were just straight like, okay, you act like a little boy. And so it made me do research on it and <laughs> voila. Can I be honest with you, though? Mm -hmm. So I kind of felt like you felt more comfortable being a boy because you were teased by boys and you felt some type of rejection from boys because like we're going to be all the way honest you had crushes on boys and you had boyfriends and i feel like after one particular boyfriend calling you ugly so much and teasing you that you had tried the whole girl thing with the little girl that we not going to name, we ain't going to put her business out there. And with that situation, you were in more control of it, and you were the dominant one. And I felt like, I'm not going to, I'm going to be real with you. I felt like it was a cop-out for you, and it was just, like, easier for you to be in that position because you weren't being rejected by other little boys. And I considered that for a while. But, like, the more that I've thought about it, and even more now that I've started this journey, I've never been more 100% sure on anything. Like, yeah, I thought about, like, okay, maybe it's just because I get rejected, or maybe it's just because I feel uncomfortable. But, like, looking back, it's like, I've always acted. In my eyes, I notice things that I used to do as, like, a little kid, or, like, I remember, like, little stupid things that I used to do where I used to say where it was, like, there's no way that I was going to grow up to be a girly girl wearing, wearing dresses and just be a lesbian doing those things, saying those certain things. And, like, I just always kind of knew. Well, I didn't always know, but now that I know, I'm 100% sure that it's not about me being rejected or anything. Like, yeah, I love being in control. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> okay. But, um, no, it was more just uh, being uncomfortable in my own skin, being uncomfortable in my body. And just not always, just always feeling like there was a piece of me that was missing or a piece of me that was messed up. So, now. <laughs> oh, and about the, um, the whole having a crush on boy thing. So, like. Do you still like boys? 
Do you I still feel- find boys attractive? Mm. So would you date a gay boy? No. Like, all right, so here's how I, like, I, I considered myself bi for a little while, even after I stopped, started the transition. And um, I see it as, I would only ever marry a female. I would only ever be in a serious relationship with a female, but I'm not objected to, like, a polyamorous relationship. Oh, Lord, here we go with all these goddamn sexual terms. Polyamorous, <laughs> fluid, non-defined. That's not even a part like, of the LGBT. That's, 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 that can be something with, like, straight people, too. Like, it's when multiple people are in one relationship. What? Yeah. That's called polygamy. Polygamy, polyamorous, whatever. Y'all be making shit up. <laughs> so... So basically, you would be in a relationship with a girl and a guy. Mm-hmm. Now, what if a guy came up on you and you had a gay club and he rubbed up on your booty because he think you? Because like, let me tell y'all, since we, since I've been out with her, because this is like what my second time being. Well, no, this is my first time being out with her, with her breasts removed and her kind of like having him having a deep voice and like everybody just really thinks he's a boy. They don't even think that he's transgender. So, I'd be like, wow. So, if a boy walk up on you and be like, ow, you know how they be and stuff, and they start twerking on you and shit. I wouldn't object it. Oh. I did not know this. Honestly, because it's like, I don't, I'm the type of person where it's like, I don't really look at, I have a preference. Everybody has a type. Light skin hoes with good hair. Light bright, Okay. But, um, colorism, self, whatever, self-hate. whatever. But, um, like, I have a preference, I have a type, but I'm not, I'm open minded. Okay. So, whatever. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, so I'm learning some new stuff. Um, but like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I could, yeah, I don't know. Cause this one boy is me. Yeah. Oh, you kind of got a crush on a boy? No, he, he got a crush on me, and he was kind of like touching up on me at my job, and I was like, yo, if you won't back up off me, I'm at work. Cute. I don't need to and how would that me. work? Because he still has his male part, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. No, we're going to get into this. Let's get into this. <laughs> and you still have your female part. Mm-hmm. Does he know that you still have a vagina? And he still be pressed up on you? Wow. It's... If you try to think too much into the gay community, LGBT community, it confuses you. So Lord, you yes, it does. I remember one time we was driving and you had this. Uh, we saw this one guy with a guy that was dressed like a girl, and like this was before I was even out. And you were like, <laughs> <laughs> "I'm not homophobic, but some shit." I, I, I listen. It confused me because I was like, "I don't get it." Yeah, you, the purpose. You already know what your question was, probably. What, I don't get it. What, what is the purpose? Yeah, you're like, well, what is Hold on now. Don't, don't get people sending me hate mail now. But go ahead. What I say in a nice term. You're just confused. Oh, okay. So, okay. So, what is a prosthetic compared to a dildo? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so think of it I as... Think of it as when you hear a prosthetic... But Not a dildo, a strap on. Uh, I'm talking about this. I was like, Mom, and it's gonna be public. Anyways, um, think of it as like, so say somebody gets a prosthetic arm. They use it every day. It's supposed to be like part of their body. It's supposed to replace something that they don't have. Mm -hmm. A prosthetic in transgender terms would be called an STP. An STP stands for stantopy. So it can be... (laughs) It can. <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. This nigga said stand to me. <laughs> Y'all not laughing at y'all. I'm dead ass laughing with y'all. I promise y'all. I don't care what y'all do. I love everybody, but the shit is kind of funny. And I can fight. So go ahead. <laughs> okay, so there are different <laughs> kinds. Listen! 
or else this is gonna be like the longest video ever. Oh my god. Anyways, to the people who do care and want to listen, anyways, it can be multiple things. It can be a four in one made in China or a three in one. Oh, four in one. I thought you said four. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyways, so a three and one. So there's okay, so there can be like a one and one, like whatever. So, okay, come on, three and one. Okay, so there's a packer that means basically you put it in your pants, it makes it look like there's something in your pants. Okay, okay. fraud. <laughs> What's makeup, anyways? So. Beauty. Um, and then there's the STP part, which is the stand up piece, so you can stand up paying with it. And then there is the play, sex, obviously. And then if it's a four in one, pleasure, masturbate. So you can really jack off a dildo and... It's not a dildo. Okay, not... Uh, anyways, back to the question of what's the difference. Oh, oh, oh no, we're not going to skip that part. We're not going to skip that. So you can masturbate with a prosthetic mm -hmm. and you feel pleasure. It depends on your body type and the prosthetic. What you mean but your body type? Everybody, every transgender's body is different. So we can all be on the same hormone, but we may all be on different levels of like how much we inject we couldn't be injecting it into different places of our bodies and there's so your clitoris might go numb no who even said anything close to that because you said it might you might okay not that was pleasure. actually part of like one of the other questions of what are the what are some changes that happen one of the changes is that your clit basically grows into a baby penis and so with the hormone it makes you very, your hormones are like all over the place. So you're always in the mood. Okay. And with this prosthetic. Does it fit in somebody's vagina though? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the baby penis. It depends on your body type. Some people actually can do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. But, um, hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, y'all. We're naturally goofy and we naturally laugh at everything. I really don't want anybody in the community to be offended by me laughing. But this is our relationship. And like I said, I can fight. So go ahead. <laughs> um, but yeah, it depends on your body type. So some people can grow to as long as a pinky. Some people shorter. And like... Yeah, so, I, I, mean, I ain't having sex with no pinky. <laughs> well, go ahead. But the prosthetic, depending on how long you are with prosthetic, you get sometimes they make them to where there's like ridges on the edge of it, so like it rubs against you. Oh, okay. So, and you got a prosthetic, right? Mm -hmm. How about for her birthday, right? <laughs> His birthday, right? I was like, what you want? And he was like, money. I was like, oh, all right, what you going to buy? You going to save it? You going to invest? And I'm always asking him about what he's doing with his money. And he was like, where is this prosthetic that I want? I said, nigga, you want me to buy your prosthetic for your birthday? Okay, hey, but listen, let me tell y'all. It looks real as ever. It's, it can attach to your body. Okay, so most prosthetics you have to wear a harness with in order for it to be there. Strap on. <laughs> Huh, whatever, if you want to call it that. But there are some that are very realistic where it's basically like you can like glue it to your body and it can stay there for like a couple days, maybe to a couple weeks, and then you take it off, you clean it, and then you put it back on. It's called ad adhesive. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you just want to get the foreign one? Mm -hmm. Nasty. <laughs> um. So... So if you get the foreign one, so wait, because you use it to play for sex, right? So if you got that, then that means when you're having intercourse that you actually feel something too. But if you get the three-in-one, it's a dud. You just pretty much humping and pretty shit. Pretty much. But there is this one prosthetic where the, um, so it has to become 
hard. So there's a rod that goes inside of it. And there's this one company that created this rod where it looks like three girl body parts and it rubs against you, but it's not a foreign one. Okay, so basically you can buy strap-ons, <laughs> prosthetics, whatever, y'all. Mm -hmm. Don't be sensitive mm -hmm. that when you're having intercourse, you actually feel something. Mm -hmm. But then there are ones where, obviously, the cheaper ones, you don't feel nothing. Mm -hmm. Whoo! Shit's expensive. And don't they cost, like, $500? The more realistic it is, yeah. That oh. I saw one that, like, looks so realistic. It has movable skin. It feels like skin. It attaches to your body. Uh, like, the balls are movable. You get balls with them? Yeah. yeah. You get balls with all prosthetics? No. All some of them look more realistic. So, they call them floating testicles. Okay. So there are some where it's like they look very realistic. You can feel them. They move around. They feel like balls. The other ones are like little rubber, just big old, not realistic at all. And how much was it? Um, the one that was very realistic was like a thousand dollars. But they have like really cheap one where it's like it may just be a packer for like ten bucks, or like they could be two hundred, three hundred, four hundred. They have like clearances on some of them, but the clearance ones usually have like defects to them. Like, it's not the right color, or it could have... This ain't be walking around with a white prosthetic. <laughs> Some people do. Some people do. They're that desperate, yeah. Some people don't do. Don't say desperate. They're going to come at your neck. Not desperate, but it's like you really want something so bad that you don't even care. Okay. So, this past weekend, I noticed every time I was like, yo, come with me to the bathroom. <laughs> 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 this mofo wouldn't go in with me, and I was like... What is he doing? Funny story. <laughs> Funny story. Okay, so for a while, I was very, very nervous and scared to go into the men's bathroom because unfortunately, there are a lot of stories of like where transgenders, they go into the bathroom they prefer. And if they if you're female to male and you go into the females, then you know, females are coming at you, harassing you. You go into the guys, you get beat up. Like there are a bunch of stories. Listen, there. remember this face. I'm a geek about mine. <laughs> He come into your bathroom stall, keep pissing and mind your business. <laughs> yeah, so for a while I was very nervous about going into the men's. I felt like I didn't pass enough. I felt like I didn't look masculine enough. So I was going into the girls. So one day, I'm with my best friend. And this is back when I was working at Macy's. And um, I go into the girls' bathroom with her. And we're sitting there joking around, avoiding work. And um, this one lady walks in. And she, like, as soon as she walks in, she just freezes. The moment she sees like me and she like kind of looks at both of us and like she just grabs her purse and holds it like tight to her and just and i like look at her i'm like smiling she just snatched and that I'm, shit, like, yeah. and I'm like hi and she just walks into the stall <laughs> <laughs> like says nothing and like there was another uh, incident where i was in the bathroom girls bathroom i was washing my hands by myself and this one lady walks in she sees me she bangs a yui goes back out to look at the sign <laughs> to see if she walked into the wrong one and then walks back in and goes about her business. And at that moment, I knew I had to stop going into the girls. So from that point forward, I've only been using the men's bathroom. And men don't say nothing when you come in? Mm -hmm. Yo, because you do look like a nigga, yo. You heard. You Got chin chin hair and stuff. Y'all. Okay. So, yeah, because I thought that was like, it, it's new for me. This is all like super new for me. So, like, literally, I'm like, what the fuck? You got the bathroom with me? Because I'm used. Him always coming to the bathroom with me, and then he was like just standing outside looking weird and shit. And I'm like, okay, I guess I gotta go by myself. And I was like, I'll just wait to ask you this question on the vlog because, uh, yeah, I guess I you don't use weapons no more. You go in the mids. I feel like I look too masculine. So, do you stand up and pee? Do you stand to pee? Stand to pee? Or do you go into a stall? <laughs> How many times are you gonna say stand to pee? Because this shit is funny. I always go into a stall. Okay, you go into a stall? Yeah, because I'm not ready to use the urinal. So, well, can you? Yeah, but I just... Hold on, you got a little pinky penis? <laughs> I can use my prosthetic to do that, to use a urinal. But the prosthetic, is it your color? Mm -hmm. Oh, so if you whip it out and somebody looks over, it's going to look like you have a penis? Do I get dirty inside of it with all the pee and stuff? Yeah, you have to wash it. Oh, okay. Have, have you ever been, like, approached by a man? In the bathroom? 
her. Because you literally like, the men's bathroom. Y'all girls and girl, y'all like to talk to each other. And look at, <laughs> hey girl, hey. In men's bathroom, we be in and out. We won't even like. And might, y'all don't even wash your hands. That's what you even nah, about to say. Nah, nah, it's nah, nasty. nah, nah. We just like we all mind our business, like, night. And that's actually something I learned from like another transgender. Like when I was doing all my research on everything, I was watching a bunch of um like transgenders talk about their experiences and stuff. And a lot of them are like usually in the men's bathroom. Y'all mind your business. Like y'all might say what's up to each other, but that's it. Like y'all not in there compensating, looking at each other, dapping each other up. Like you walk in, you do your thing, you walk out. Oh, okay. Whatever. Y'all like to socialize. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so, what type of reception have you received from family and friends? What's that mean? I don't know, because I think I used the wrong word. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> How have your family and friends like, treated you? Um with this change my crazy cousins what's up y'all they've been very hilarious about all of it because you know they have no filters but they've been uh, accepting about it i think actually like yeah Juliet. have you gotten any blowback from anybody that i don't know of mm. and speak on it <laughs> one but i handled it who my little brother to die. Oh, okay. Like I was I was actually very nervous about like telling them because I didn't know how they would react because they're younger. So it's like um I took them to Peter Piper Pizza where y'all were hanging out and then when we were sitting down eating, um, I just like kinda told them about it and like they were just like, Okay. And I was like, For real? Like And what did I say though? To Jai when he when I first told him, he was like, Okay, and then um, I think it was right before I was getting my surgery. I uh, was having a talk to him about something. I don't remember how we got on the subject, but I was at work. And um, we were talking, and he was like, why do you have to do it? I'm like, what are you talking about? And we kind of like got into like a little, not like an argument, but the conversation was a little intense. But, um, yeah. <laughs> he was like, you know, like, why do you have to do it? Or, you know, like, you're good as a stud. Just stay like a stud or whatever. <laughs> like, you, you're not ugly. Like, you're cute. Like, just stay like that, bro. Like, you're fine. Like, you know, if you're doing it because you're not accepted, like, you're good, bro. And I was kind of like, no, like, it's, it has nothing to do about being accepted by anybody else. It's about me accepting myself. Because you I, did have some big titties. <laughs> and I the hated it all. Ah! Can I just say that, like, so the first time that we linked up after we've been kind of separated for a little bit because she decided to up and leave and go out to Arizona and not say bye to me, but we're going to go to another time. Um, uh, like, she has big boobs. Her boobs is bigger than mine, and she's always had big jugglers. And we would leave out, and he would put some strappy thing on, and them drones would disappear. And I okay, was like, how is that possible? called a strappy thing. All right, it's called a binder. A that bind thing was. It's a, basically. Did it hurt? For, no. So it's all about <laughs> sizing for one. Like they're actually like very cautious about binders because a lot of transgenders because they hate their chest so much, they use tape instead, or they use like a bandage tape, and like that's actually very dangerous because it can crush your ribs, mess up your breathing, all that stuff. So they prefer people wear binders, and it's basically like. A compression top, but it literally makes like your chest disappear if you get the right size. That thing was a miracle, bro. Okay. All right. Um, how about strangers and employers? Um, I know strangers because I've been with strangers. you with strangers, and strangers don't even know. Like they can't now, even tell. Now, uh, now, when I first started out, it was a lot of confusion, and like some people would come up to me and be like, "Hey, dude. Hey, guy." Others would be like. <laughs> Hey girl, and I'll kind of look at him like after I started the homo was like, do I look or sound like a girl to you? Like, okay, whatever. I guess when like I first started out, yes. Now, like, there's no confusion about it. Like everybody is like he, him, nobody. Like maybe like here and there, I might get somebody who's like she, and then I'll like when they say that to me, I'll just get real deep on them. Like, what'd you say? And I'm like, <laughs> okay. Like, <laughs> like, but does it come from people who knew you when you were a girl, or is it new people who are just meeting you? Um, 
it's rare now it's rarely strangers it's more like people who know me um and like i'm very patient with it like and i know like sometimes they'll catch themselves or if they'll say like she they'll be like dude like why don't you correct me and i'm just like like i'm not i'm, I'm you're not sensitive about it no more because at first the, not the really MF was sensitive sensitive as hell yeah one day i'm like we having a heart to heart, and I'm like, cause you'll always be my daughter, blah blah blah. And I'm yeah, not I saying it. I was not saying it in a manner of you trying to be shady. I was literally that. saying no because I was trying to help you through a tough situation because you were depressed, right. and I was letting you know, like, I don't care what nobody else says. Like, you're always like, I'm here for you. You're always in, the, and I'm saying my daughter just out of habit, like, not even thinking it was being intentional or hurting her him and then like a couple days later i'm like what's your what's your deal and he sent me some long drawn ass paragraphs knowing that i hate when people send me long paragraphs because i'm not reading all of it and he's like and you were being shady by calling me daughter and i was like Whoa there, big fella. <laughs> Whoa there, big fella. First of all, I was actually not being shady, and I didn't even know that you were taking it to offense. Like, I was trying to have a heart-to-heart -heart with you. But ever since that moment, I was like, okay, so you're sensitive right now. Not even sensitive like any change. Let's just say you're, you're not sensitive like anymore. I'm Bro, more, I'm I was a, saying it like, I'm more I love person. you, you're my... My seed, not when, like when you say that to any transgender, not even just me. If if any parent goes to their son, daughter that's transitioning, and they're like, "You're always gonna be, you know, the birth gender," that automatically offends any transgender. Hey, okay, I don't care so what anybody? Okay, say. so now this is a real conversation. So coming from the parent standpoint, sometimes we're not saying it to be smart, shady, condescending. We're literally trying to let you know that regardless, like, our love is unconditional for you. Like, and sometimes we're just used to freaking calling you by your birth gender. Like, especially your parents. Like, first of all, we've been with you since birth. We pushed you out our vaginas. So, if I've been saying for the last 19 years or however long it takes for y'all to come out or whatever... She, 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 her, 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 daughter, daughter, daughter. It's not going to happen overnight where I'm going to start being like my son, my son, my son. Like, and especially if we're talking to you. Right. We're feeling like it's a safe environment to just address you as our birth, your birth gender. So it. I would say to anybody who is transitioning, if you know your parent loves you and they are saying it, don't take it to offense. Like, don't be so sensitive and don't. Don't be on my comments talking about it's not, it sensitivity. It's not because look, it, it's just like I was kind of actually thinking about this earlier, where it's like somebody may go to a transgender and be like, "Oh, she, he, calling them, you know, the wrong gender, the one that they don't prefer," and kind of being like, "Oh, well, it's." Uh, We're not talking about strangers. We're talking about your parents. There's a difference. There's a huge difference because, like I said, anybody who talks about you to me has to address you the correct way. Right. But for somebody who has literally been with you, took care of you your entire life and has addressed you one way, it's gonna that, take it's gonna be out of habit that sometimes, especially if we're in an emotional conversation with you, we're not thinking about how we're addressing you. We're trying to get the point of our love and consoling you across. We're not thinking Oh my gosh, my child now thinks that I'm being condescending or I don't love them because I'm calling them by their birth gender. And that's what, like, that's what I mean. And coming from a transgender point of view, we get that. And we'll, like, after we have a conversation like we are now, we'll understand it. But because you guys are our parents or family or whatever, close friends, we hold you at a higher standard because of it. Okay. So it's like if a stranger comes to us, it's like, we're not going to take that, like, we don't even care. We're not really listening because they don't have really impact on our life. But if you're somebody who's close to us, we care about, it hurts even more or affects us even more because we're family or we're blood or we have a tight relationship. So we hold you at a higher standard. Like, okay, you've known me all this time. I get it. It's going to take time and patience for you to, like, catch on. But I need you to catch on because your opinion matters. You matter to me. 
Okay, I get that. So let me ask you this. Has it been hard getting employment? Even though I know you got like two jobs and shit. So can you get it for my mama? Is it hard for you to get jobs? Do you find yourselves getting... Well, since I've started the transition, I've never really had to run into that issue because when I started at Macy's, um, I was just starting the transition and... Um, you were already hired and you was like, I wish I would fire <laughs> you the suit. Nah, nah, it was like, it, it was the very early stages of my transition. So it was still kind of like the confusion stage for everybody, like, are you a boy or are you a girl? And um, a couple of my like coworkers like just grew chest hair and asked me like, not are you a boy or a girl, <laughs> but they were like, you know, what do you prefer to be called? Because, you know, they were hearing my best friend call me he, him, and things like that. And I, I told them, and they were like, okay. And then I kind of, like, came on to them, like, yeah, this is what I'm going through, stuff like that. And they're like, oh, okay, totally respect it. And, like, I never even told my manager, but, like, just one day she just started calling me he, him. And, like, it always made me feel good because anytime, like, she'd walk up and I was with, like, a male coworker, she'd be like, what's up, fellas, or... What's up, gentlemen? How you guys doing? Or she'd be like, ladies and gentlemen, if I'm the only guy there. So, like, it made me feel comfortable because, like, everybody there was pretty accepting. And then after that, I was already on the hormone. So, everybody else kind of just, like, either didn't know or if I did end up telling them, they were very accepting about it. Like, my bosses now are okay accepting. Like, when I was uh, going to surgery, they were very excited for me. Like, my boss actually sent me a nice little paragraph. Almost made me cry when he sent it. But he sent me this paragraph, he was like, yo, I hope for a very speedy recovery, like, you know, I'm praying for you, I'm so happy for you. My other uh, a manager was like, yo, I'm so excited for you, I'm happy for you. So, it's been nothing but love with my employers. And I was like, it wasn't about you getting the surgery, I just felt like the timing was wrong. I felt like the money could have been invested, so that way when you did pay for this... First of all, a lot of things with me root around money, investments, longevity, and not being a bum. So I felt as though use that money less invested and then with your profits and you still have your seed money invested, use your profits to pay for the surgery. And I felt like you were rushing. And it was like a permanent decision that, yeah, you might feel this way today, but how are you going to feel in the next 10 years? Because this is something that, don't get me wrong, at the end of the day, I don't know how it would work if, like, in 10 years, you did wake up and say, you know what? I want my boobies back. Yeah, you could go get fake little implants and stuff, but how would it, what would be the repercussions of coming off of the hormones and stuff? So, every person is different of how it would end or how it would go. So, like, what I do, what I was reading about a lot when I was doing research is, like, it's a permanent permanent decision. There is no going back. Like, yes, you could stop the hormones and, like, you kind of regress back because your estrogen, which is female hormones, it would kind of, like, start taking over again because right now it's kind of like your estrogen and your testosterone are fighting each other. Testosterone is winning right now. But if you stop, then your estrogen starts to build back up so things would come back so, or, like, things would start back up. Like, my voice may get a bit higher, but it's still going to kind of have, like, a deep tone to it. Um my body formation may change a little bit more like so some things kind of go back but some things are like permanent like that's it will you and keep your adams yo she got a he got a adams apple i just yesterday was the first time he was like yo you know i got an adams apple I was like he was like touch it i was like mm. that's hard too he was like touch it yo and not touch it. i was like yo you really got an adams apple like what Oh man, that drone's about to die. Yeah, my phone getting a little low too, so. Okay, so let's hurry it up. Okay, but, 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 to answer the question, basically, um, to anybody that, like, transgender or whatever, like, if you are starting this process, just know there's really no going back. And like I said, like, there's only two things in life that I've ever been 100% sure about, is that I really wanted to do this transition, and I knew I would never wake up and say I made a mistake, and that my father was never coming back home only two things that I've ever been sure about. Not to make this all sad and sappy, but it's the only thing it's I've true. ever been sure about. And mm -hmm. even with my dad thing, like, for the first couple of years, I still thought he was going to come home. But anyways, next question. Does the hormones make you depressed? 
Um, I'm not gonna say it makes you depressed, but it does affect your moods. So that was actually one of the warnings that they give you before they give you the uh, hormones. They tell you like all the changes that can happen. And one of them was like, you know, mood swings or the way you react to things may be a bit different. Like it could be positive, it could be negative. You could be a bit calmer when it comes to things. Um, you could be a bit more chilled, laid back, relaxed. It doesn't really change. Like a lot of people think it changes your personality. It doesn't, but it could change like your temper with things. Like if you get mad, you know, you might get a bit more heated. Like I notice like when I get mad, I start to like sweat a bit more. And it's just like little things like that. But it's not really like, oh, you start this hormone and like everything changes. It's all like mentally and how you are as a person. Okay, so some questions that we received was, is your mom accepting of your decision? That's a twofold question for me. Do I like it? No. And you know that pretty much, right? No, I don't like it. Am I accepting of it? Yeah. A thousand percent. I always tell him that my love for you is going to outweigh my opinions on any given day. At the end of the day, it's your life. I just want you to be happy. I don't like it. But eventually you just got to get over the shit. Like, you got to build a bridge and get over it. And that's what I've had to do. And I'm still getting over it. There are certain... I will say that the moments aren't as frequent anymore. Like, it's not like a consistent feeling now anymore. Because I just don't care. Because he's still the same person. He is still the exact same person. And I've always loved him not only because he's my child, but because of the type of person he is, period. We are best friends. We grew up together. I had him at a very young age. So it's like, at the end of the day, he's still him. So I'm completely accepting of it. I'm completely, like, very sensitive over him and protective of him. So, yes, I absolutely am accepting of it, but I don't like it. Yeah, and that was actually a couple people's worries. They were like, oh, if you start it, you're going to change. It doesn't change your personality. No, you haven't changed it at all. It just changes the way you look. Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, do you have any tips for other transgenders before we wrap this up? And if you guys have any questions, hurry up and ask them. Okay. I do got a question. But, um, any tips? Um, any tips? Um, one, like I said before, be 100% sure. Don't start it without knowing for a fact. Like, do your research. That's literally how I found everything out. Like, I don't even remember how I stumbled across the transgender community, but I just remember once I found it, I couldn't stop reading about it. Because I told him, stop reading everything on Google. It wasn't even just and Google. And go find it was, stuff. But I, you was reading a lot of stuff. I was, and I was telling I was you to go find. Too. But I was telling you to go find yeah. real people and get their insight. Fraud in. I was doing no, it before he she even knew. Yeah, so how you going to tell me? I literally remember sitting there watching. And I was actually on the phone with um, Sierra. I don't know if you remember her, but from LVPA. She was, like, actually the first person to know. And um, I remember just watching, like, a bunch of timeline videos of transgenders literally showing their transition from the start to the be- uh from the end to the end and just watching so many videos about it and then reading about it to where I knew for a fact, okay, this is exactly what I wanted. So that's one tip. Make sure you're 100% sure. Two, there are going to be some very dark days. There are going to be some very hard moments. There are going to be times where people don't accept you. There are going to be times where you feel like you're alone in this world, but I promise you, you are not and that it does get better. Like right now, I have found the best people I could call literally my brothers right now. Um, There's this one guy who started this group chat and ever since he started that group chat, even though he don't even be in it no more. Of transgender from female to male, black people. Yeah, it's literally all female to male transgenders in this group chat. And it started off very diverse. We had every race and then, you know, people just start leaving. But the people that did stick around, it's like, I think 12 of us and we're literally all African-American men. 
female to a male and we literally talk about anything and everything like some days we talk about transitioning some days we ask each other questions about stuff some of us haven't even started the hormones yet some of us have been on it for two years some of us have kids some of us don't like we literally are all across kids that they birth some of us, um, like we're literally, it's not funny. Like, it's not funny. I'm anyways, sorry, we're y'all. literally like all across the United States, and it's like the best thing I could have asked for. Like, I love these guys with like all my heart. So, literally, just find somebody. If y'all don't have anybody, y'all can always contact me, but literally, like, you are not alone. And then you're just gonna put your hand right in front of the camera. Oh, hold on, it's about to die. Well, hold on, y'all, because we have two questions. So, maybe you can answer, um, Freak Neek. Uh, so, bro, what your name is, Taj? I've answered that question in the video if you would have watched it. But, um, my name, I am going to legally change it to Tajay, since you be messing it up all the time. Tajay Enrique Primus, but everybody calls me TJ. See if we got more questions. Not in that one. We got a question for you. Um, I know somebody asked me yeah. if... Do you think you will be able to like it? Hold on. Is this still recording? I think it is. Okay. Somebody asked me if I will ever be able to like it. No. Yes. Okay. Somebody asked me if I will ever be able to like it. No. <laughs> I'm being honest. I'm being honest. I'm never going to like it. I'm not. That's just me. And I'm and like I told him, you have to allow people to you have to the same way you want me to respect your opinions, your beliefs, what you like, what you don't like. All I have to do is respect it. I don't have to like it. And I had to we had plenty of conversations about that. Because you would feel jaded in some type of way. And I'm like, listen, don't nobody have to like your stuff. Don't nobody even have to accept you. But they will respect you. That's one thing we don't play with. So, no, I'm never going to like it. She said, why not? Because I had a daughter, and I, I freaking had a freaking daughter, and I grew up having a daughter, and I want my daughter, and I don't have a daughter no more. So, there's a lot of things that, as a mother, I'm going to miss out on, and but, but that's being selfish. And I can, I can say I'm being selfish, but not I'm not going to be able to, like, go through... Babies, with, I know you can still have babies other ways or whatever, but there are just certain things I'm going to miss out on. I'm never going to be able to walk you down the aisle. Well, I can't walk you down the aisle. Damn it, I just don't like it. <laughs> Damn it. Literally everything that I you're said saying what can I said. Still I know, but it's still different. It's different. It's still different. Like, I can literally freeze my eggs and still have a child. I get that. And you're going to be looking crazy as hell every time I see them studs walking around freaking pregnant. I think y'all look crazy as hell. But that's my opinion. And opinions are like assholes and everybody got one. So am I ever going to like it? No, I probably won't. But am I always going to love you, like you, take care of you, be your number one hitter? So the day we die. And you know that. Day one, the day none. So I just don't like it. I said what I said. Any more questions before we wrap this up? I love, I love you, you too. too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, oh. thank you so much for tuning in to this special live episode of Destiny's Diary Vlog. Um, I will edit it and post it up on YouTube. <clears> and if <throat> you are watching it on YouTube for the first time, Feel free to reach out to us. Our information is going to be in the comments below. If you have anything hatred, hateful to say, keep it to yourself. I do pull up. He might not be able to fight, but he got a lot of hitters. Everything that I said in this, this is my feelings. How? Like, you know, because I'm pretty sure it might offend some people in the LGBTQ, RSCV community. I still love y'all. And I can fight. I so, I, I love everybody, and I don't care what other people do with their lives. Like, I really don't. I don't care. So, I, I hope this <laughs> I hope this doesn't offend anybody, and I hope you guys just take this as an inside 
view of what a transgender and their parents go through and maybe it will help you guys on your journey. So like I said, if you guys have any questions, want to reach out to us, you need support from them, you need somebody to maybe help talk to your mama, y'all can sit down and watch. Y'all can contact us with the information below. And as always, peace, peace and love. love. Period, poop. All right, y'all. Love y'all. Period. <laughs> I didn't like that one. The sober one was better. But I feel more comfortable doing drunk. <laughs> that shit was horrible. I ain't doing shit over. That's a good thing about my diary. I be like, y'all gonna take this shit how you get it.